and Martin Hibbert's life was changed forever. This is May 2017 when he was left paralysed from the waist down at the Manchester Arena bombing. And after embarking on a long and gruelling road to recovery, he was determined to make a difference, becoming a leading campaigner, both for victims of the attack and those with spinal cord injuries. In 2022, he scaled Kilimanjaro in a wheelchair. That achievement, plus his life before and after the bombing, detailed in a new book. We'll be speaking to Martin in just a moment. Uh, morning to you, Martin. Morning. We'll have a look at you up a mountain first. <laughs> How's that? Thank you. Yeah, always good. I wanted something that people looked and thought, he's doing what? It's hard enough for somebody with legs to do it. And here's a guy do it in a wheelchair. It is a risk. I am putting my life on the line doing it. It was just such a relief to get there and know that we've done it. Just so proud. Just so proud. And Martin's with us now, as you know. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. When a proud day today. Uh, you sat down here on our sofa and the first thing you said, oh, it's a very proud day. Why is that? Uh, well, my life is in a book, um, which is released today. And um, obviously everyone knows I lost my mum a couple of years ago. She probably read a couple of books every week, so she'd be really proud that her son's written a book uh, about my life. But actually, it's a, a celebration of my mum. You know, she, she has made me the man that sits before you today, so it is a, a celebration about my mum. Seeing some lovely pictures just then. I don't yeah. know if you saw some of yeah. those. Yeah, I sent them in. <laughs> so yeah, it's, she's uh, she's my life, and uh, I miss her. I miss her very, very, very much. And it's times like this, and when I climb Kilimanjaro, that it it kind of really, really hurts. But I know she's watching, and she'd be very proud today. How are you doing? Good, good. It's um, I've been in hospital. The usual people that are reading the book will know that. <sighs> Urinary tract infections and sepsis have been my Achilles heel, and uh, I was in hospital. I came out uh, a week on Sunday, uh, so I'm, I'm looking after myself. Uh, but it's a busy day today. Uh, but other than that, everything's good. Um, you are very. It's almost naked. How raw everything, how clear you are about everything yeah. that is involved with the spinal cord injury, which I, I really appreciated actually, because I think. It's really easy to almost have it like this fairy tale, like you've recovered and, you know, but the hard work you've put in and the th that climb, Kilimanjaro, what your friends had to do to help you yeah. physically function, and I'm not talking about moving, I'm talking about all the physical functions, you are really open about in this book. Did you make a decision <coughs> to do that? Before yeah, you when, when, when they approached me to write the book, I was, I was very conscious, you know, when I came on BBC Breakfast, I was always looking fit and well, you know, when, whenever I'm on telly, radio, in the news, I'm always celebrating something. But people didn't get to see when I was in hospital, like I was a couple of weeks ago, where literally I can't do anything. And I'm at the mercy of the brilliant NHS staff. Or, you know, if I've got bowel and bladder uh, accidents, um, you know, and I said, look, if I'm going to write this book, it's got to be an honest account of my life. Warts and all. Yeah, so exactly, speak. and that's what it is. You know, I, I say some, you know, very personal things, you know, uh, my relationship with my wife, you know, and it's it's all laid bare, but that that's what I wanted. I wanted people to read it and and and, and go, do you know what, Hat, hats off to him. You know, I've, I've, I've achieved a lot since my spinal cord injury, and that was another big thing as well, that, you know, people that are being told that they're never going to walk again, that a spinal cord injury is life-changing, not life-ending, and that was really important to me, so hopefully that came across in the book. How do you... You go into great detail, and I won't ask you to do it now, about the incident itself. 
that moment in time, what yeah. you can remember at the aftermath yeah. and, the, and the agony of that. And that deserves to be read properly and, and you detail that in a way I think you haven't before. But one of the things that interests me is about um, how you look back on it and how you look back on it without anger. And I, and I don't know where that, where that kicked in or how that kicked in because that, that is a quality that you appear to have and you've got it from somewhere. Yeah, well, <clears throat> that was one of the things, I think, when, when the publishers, uh, again, came to me to write the book, I think people thought that this was just something that happened from the bomb, and it's not. I've always been stubborn, I've always been very determined, and I've always been very successful in whatever I've done, so hopefully that comes across in the book, you know, certainly when I was younger. Um, it's a question that's asked a lot, um, and the only way that I can answer it is that what happened to me that night, I'd accepted death. I didn't think I was coming out. I said goodbye to everybody in my head. And as I, uh, as I say in the book, I, I said to Chris, the security guard that was looking after me, I don't think I'm going to make it, so please tell my wife, Gabby, that I love her. So to accept that and to make peace with that and then to wake up in intensive care a couple of weeks later, even though I'm being told I've not, I've, I'm paralysed and I'm never going to walk again, you know what I mean? It was like, right, from, from what I saw that night and, and how I was, and obviously seeing Eve in the state that she was, to know that we were both alive, you know what I mean? It was like, look, I've got to live every day to the full, and, and that's what I've done, but the, the stubbornness, the determination, the pig-headedness, that's been there from birth. That, that's very evident, actually. Yeah. I mean, didn't you refuse to smile and eat? Didn't you go on yeah. hunger strike? When, when, when your, Danny your was brother born, my brother, brother yeah, I, I, I went into what hunger strike. What a brat. I know. I know, and uh, it's funny because when, when I'm when I'm annoyed about something, now I stop eating. So it, it's still with me now, and I'm I'm 48 this year. You'll grow up soon. Yeah, right, no, but you've hopefully. got loads, loads of loads of time. My wife says yeah. I will. My wife says I will. <laughs> um, what I, I I mean, we've spoken to you a lot on this program, and one of the things is I still I'm still learning is things like a hotel. I'm talking about disability access now. I didn't know that even in a five-star hotel, if you say you've got a disability-friendly room or able, you know, room, all it means is that your wheelchair just has to get through the door. Mm. So you, at one point you were in a hotel as, as part of a, one of your, your campaigns or publicity mm. um, and there was a bath in there. Yeah, and it, it happens all the time. Um, it's one of the things I'm really keen on changing. Um, happened last year where I was put in an accessibility room. I couldn't get through the front door. In a wheelchair? Yeah. I so couldn't did get they, into so the hotel room. How did room. they justify it's, it's, it being an yeah, accessibility room? It's the, it's the one area that really needs to book up its ideas. Um, and as I say in the book, it's, it's not the spinal cord injury, it's not my wheelchair that makes me feel disabled, it's people and environments. And that's the one thing that... You know, I, I want to change, I want to help to change. It's not about pointing the finger, it's about having a roundtable discussion and saying, right, how do we improve? How, how do we make disabled people feel comfortable and accepted in society? And retail and hospitality have got to do better. It's a, it's a really good... I'll tell you what's good, cos I got to see a lot of you before, cos I always have... Always enjoyed your company here on the Thank sofa, you. but I'd see now where a lot of that comes from. It's my mum, it's growing up in Bolton, it's not having the things that I enjoy now, um, but it's having that, it's having those people around me uh, who keep me grounded, uh, don't let me get a big head. Uh, but my mum always used to say to me, never forget your Martin Hibbert from Bolton, and that's always in, always in my head. Martin Hibbert from Bolton, thank you very much for joining <laughs> us welcome. in Salford on thank the sofa. It's, it is a fascinating read. Martin's whole life is documented yeah. right from day one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Martin's book, Top of the World Surviving the Manchester Bombing to Scale Kilimanjaro in a Wheelchair, is out now.